praise God. Yeah, one of the things I do want to ask you all, because both of you are musicians, do you see or have you seen or an experience uh, some abuse or churches or pastors not really care about you as long as you're playing. What what are y'all saying since you're musicians? I mean this I think everybody that is in the body of Christ to some degree, especially if you are a musician, yeah. you need to hear they need to hear some of the things you all are saying. Mm -hmm. Versus maybe early on your relationship was not as strong as it's going right now. Mm -hmm. Would you all agree with that? Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. So I that can change a little bit concerning the perception. But now that you're seeing it in hindsight and knowing, hey, I have, I have to have a personal relationship with God, it will matter nothing if I'm playing, even if I'm getting a million dollars yeah. a gig, and yeah. God is never pleased, and I end up dying without ever having to think that I'm doing anything wrong. Because I think, in a sense, you can be doing a good thing, but it's not the right thing. Yeah. And so you all just tell me where you all are in terms of that. Oh, I'll say <clears throat> to, the, to the first question you asked, like being taken advantage of or used. That as was, a musician. As a musician. That was the, the thing that really challenged me coming from my granddaddy's church and it's family you know that they love you you don't get paid but who cares they got me something for christmas and they take care of me during the the regular portion of my life i know that they love me so it was never a question it was just it was just what i did getting out of that and going to other places and to different churches under different pastors that's where i started seeing oh these people don't care about me like the, I, this is no lie. I remember I would come to church, like, I can say this now. I, I used to go to church drunk or hungover. Really? And be there like on time. Nobody says anything to me. Even though the smell can be on your mouth. They wouldn't say anything to me. If I showed up sober and late, it was a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but if good. you were drunk or wow. getting over, uh, your drunkenness, nobody said anything. Uh -huh. Why? They, what do you think? As long as I came and played, they were fine. As long as there was like no gap in the service and people shouted and people were excited and the music was helping, they, they didn't care. Wow. They didn't care. And what would be like the, from the smallest to the largest church you played in? I, man, I played it. I played at the biggest churches in New Orleans, some of the biggest churches in New Orleans. You're talking like, a thousand plus? Yes, sir. To as little as what, 50 people? Yeah, exactly, yep. And so I got to fill in at a few <coughs> places down there. And some of the biggest churches down there, it was like. When you say down there, in Louisiana? In Louisiana, yep. Okay. And some of the biggest churches down there, I was like, oh my God. Some of the pastors you meet, you'd have a chance to talk to. Some of them didn't care as long as somebody was fit. I don't know how that would feel, what? honestly. If you came in and I don't know who you are. Oh, that, I got you, yeah. That was normal. That was an, it was a normal thing. Yeah. That we experienced a lot of, our lives as musicians, uh, <clears throat> me and him both have experienced uh, have, have had similar, almost parallel walks, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to that type of stuff. But yeah, I, I can truly say that, you know, in my time in Louisiana, there was not many churches, uh, really not any, that, that I experienced that uh, the pastor or, you know, the powers that be really cared about uh, you other than what you could do, mm -hmm. you know, what your service was. And then after that, you know, on to the next. On to the next. Wow. On to the next. And so, give me an age group of these pastors. What would you say were they dominantly young, middle age, or oh. more mature and older, over fifty-five or sixty years old? I would say, in my in my experience, it was uh, 
It was a uh, middle age, yeah. okay. mostly middle age. Not too many young uh, pastors, and and uh, not too many old, but mainly like right in that middle age. I'd say maybe from like, uh, let's just say 30, 37 to fifty. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere range, around yeah. there. So predominantly they are in that range. So that tells you a lot about the mentality and how they probably were raised mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the church. So they were accustomed to that. Yeah. Bringing in like odd work man, just to come in and play yes. and they had no concern or consideration. I mean, didn't they have musicians? Especially the large ones. So here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> That's a good question. A lot of those musicians are very good and they go tour. So when they go and tour, somebody has to be there to fill in. So a lot of those musicians, they can play. They're very good. And when they're not there, they want a musician of the same caliber. And that's when you start getting into, so that's when you'll start hearing the conversations about, oh yeah, we, we, we <coughs> love God, but we also have to be, you hear this conversation a lot, in the spirit of excellence, as if the spirit of excellence is separate from the spirit of God. Mm. Like, hey, the spirit of God is over here, which is, the will of God and the commandments of God. <laughs> yeah. And then you got the spirit of excellence over right, here just right. makes you perform this music well. <laughs> so, so they'd rather have your talent <laughs> yes, sir. than anything else, Absolutely. not your, your heart or anything. From my experience, yes. That, there was never a pastor who pulled me aside. Now and, you're saying never. Yes. That's a, a like that. That, there was never a pastor, except for my granddad. I didn't have yeah. a choice. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, when, when I got out, because I, I played for churches in Virginia, I played for several churches, uh, Virginia, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Florida, and then in, in Louisiana. And so at all of these churches, this is no lie, there was never a pastor who pulled me aside and said, how is your spiritual life? Where are you right now? Hey, have you actually accepted Christ? No. Yeah. The, yeah, that that's never, important, isn't it? No pastor ever asked me that. I, I could concur with that. So, now you're saying never. I mean that. For all the years, now you're both raised up in the church. Mm -hmm. Your father is presently a pastor. Yes, your sir. daddy is a was minister, a minister and, and granddaddy. your granddaddy is a bishop. That's right. And so both of you were raised in the church. Yes, were any of these churches under white leadership that you all played at? Or? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it yes, was sir. the same way. Yeah, you know, I, I can say, you know, speaking from experience, you know, um, they were, it's not that, they, that I don't feel that they weren't good people, but in right. that I aspect understand. of checking on you beyond uh, you being at the service and, and performing your duties or, or whatever the case may be, that part of checking on your soul, I never, I can concur, I never really experienced that in, uh, in New Orleans. And you all be honest with me. You didn't have a relationship with God. It was we like had a this. form of a form of, <laughs> yeah, it was a form, form of godliness. <laughs> we lived so, so we, no, we lived together. <laughs> so no. There were this is what it was. Hey, the only dance we used to know was the backslide, that's and it. we used to do it every week. So <laughs> it, it's, every week, that's what we did. The dance called the backslide, and we did the backslide every week. So even if we went, even if we went, uh, like one of my cousins. Mm -hmm. I okay. Here's a great story. So. One of my cousins. Now Josh, you know other people are gonna see this. Yeah, so, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, Tell yeah. the truth. They, yeah. call, they, they probably don't have my number anymore. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but one of my cousins, he was he came home possessed or influenced, vexed, or whatever. I don't know if somebody did something to him. This is when we were living in New Orleans. He came home literally possessed. And he was Talking in a not in his voice, and I, when I got home, I literally said, "I said, I can't say exactly what I said, but I said he gotta go, he gotta go." I said he can do whatever he want in there right now. I can't be in there because I feel like I hurt him. And then I was bigger than so I felt, uh -huh. and so then I was like, 
<laughs> you remember what I'm, I told I'm you? I'm leaving. He was, and he said, hey, you can't leave, man. He said, you can't leave. I said, he was like, come on. We got to go in here and make sure this boy is okay. We went in there. My cousin didn't know his mother like that. Because uh -huh. when his mother died, Josh maybe was only... He was young, bro. That was, was in, that was in 2011. Yeah. So he had to be. Yeah, he was a yeah, kid. He was, a he kid. was maybe like eight, nine years old, oh, something like that. Oh, wow. And so, literally, Josh is standing in the middle of the living room saying, you know you're disappointing your mother. You know, like he started calling her name out. Pamela Parham, you know you disappointed her. She sees you. She knows. Telling it's you. Telling him this. Telling and him. so you know it's it's a demonic spirit. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what in the world? I'm telling you. And so literally, and this is what I knew though. So he goes on, he starts like slamming the dishes and I was like, bro, you need to chill. So I choke him out. <laughs> yes, I did. choke I him out. DDT. I put, I put him in yes, a headlock sir. and I choke him out and his body goes limp. Uh -huh. And his body goes limp and the voice keeps talking Still and talking. says, Kill me. You'll be helping me out. This is no lie, Bishop. So Bishop, I'm, we're standing over, uh, standing over him, and he says, kill me. You'll be helping me. You're next. And then I'm like, yo, what in the world? Me, I didn't know what was going on. I had been, I, I, I don't know. I had just came from a gig or something, so I started saying just what my grandparents did and stuff. I plead the blood of Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus. He, <laughs> his body still limp. This is no lie, Bishop. His body is limp. Yep. Like, no fight at right, all, right. but the voice is still talking. And then he says, you don't even believe what you're saying. Wow. Yep. He says, you don't even believe what you're saying. So I don't know how long went by. And we was I there did, for a minute. Bro. We was there for a while, we but I don't know how long went by. And he came back, too. Like, his body uh -huh, came uh -huh. back, too. And then I choked him out again. I'm like, yo, this is really like a... <laughs> This is happening. So did you, was it at that point you said, I need to get serious? Yes. And yeah. I just started praying. For and, real, though. And, okay. and you really started and, praying and asking in the spirit. For forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness. Yeah. Asking the Lord for forgiveness. Praying, Lord, you know, save my cousin, save me. Whatever this spirit is on him, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And, and just praying for him. And, and I don't know how long. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but then that spirit came off of him. And that next day is is what changed our life i never i'll never forget that morning that morning of the next day we mm. i we woke up and our rooms were like josh was in the living room i was in my room jonathan's room was like right next to mine but all of the doors was open because it was late that night mm -hmm. and i woke up and i just sat up in bed and i was crying and i looked over and i saw jonathan jonathan was crying and then i we walked in the living room and, crazy, we, and, and josh was sitting on the sofa just crying how and, old were you all at that time, I think I probably was maybe I had just turned. Uh, that was in 2020. So. Oh, you're talking about at the beginning of. Uh, so I was 28. Yeah. COVID. Yep. It was around okay. that 2019 or 20. 28, 20. Around yeah. that time. Wow. Yes, sir. Changed our lives. So that next day, the next day, I. Uh, that next Sunday, I went to the church that I was playing at, uh -huh. and I was like, because I was like, we talked, and we all agreed, hey, we can't be playing around. Yep. Like, we you see. You knew, because you knew you were raised in church, so you know. But go ahead. And, and so we were saying, what's up? I would say, you, you, don't forget to add a piece of what you, what you had been asking or the right. battle that you had been having yeah. with belief yeah. that what you actually had been raised up in was yeah. actually real. Because I remember him saying to me, I, he said, I had prayed for God to show me a sign That's that right, yeah. spirituality is something that really I should be, you know, uh, striving for a relationship with him. Mm. And then when that happened. Yeah. It's like there's no that doubt about it yeah. that oh, this yeah. stuff is Absolutely. real. Because it was just what I knew for so long. It's just mm -hmm. like, am I just indoctrinated? Right. Or is it real? And that was a prayer that I used to pray. Well, Lord, show me then. And it's like, oh, if you won't see me, you'll see this demon. <laughs> just, but the seed that was in you yes. grew a little bit more. Mm -hmm. A lot. A lot went, more. <laughs> did you go back into, the, you know, the sin again and... Uh, so, yeah. so <laughs> we did. This is this is what happened. Yep. 
after that day, after that night, after that night, uh, we all was just like, hey, we gotta get, we we can't be playing anymore. Yeah. We need to get serious. And so we literally started having morning Bible studies, we prayed up, in the yep. morning, prayed at night before, all three of us together before Praise we God. before we went to bed and stuff. And that next Sunday, I quit the church I was playing. And I was like, and I told the lady, I was like, listen, it's nothing that y'all have done. I said, I felt the Lord speak to me and said, I need to stop playing. And I didn't say this to her, but in, in, I was convicted. Hey, you don't need to be a part of anything that you see that's not serious. Mm -hmm. So I quit. And then they thought that somebody else just had offered me more money. And then I just. And it wasn't that it at wasn't, all. Because they asked around and it got back to me. And so then uh, we did this. We did it for a while, Bishop. And literally all it took was for one of us to get distracted. And then all three of us. Oh, and, that, and that was me, you know. And I, I can honestly say that was me because of, you know, just being uh, in a relationship that was not what I needed to be in, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and being distracted, that sort of pulled me away. And then it was kind of, he was kind of like, well, if nobody else ain't going to be doing, you know, holding each other accountable, then I might as well just fall off too. And yeah. that's, you know, that's how it happens. But, uh, you know, it's good to have. Uh, a community when you have a community of people that you know that are on the same path as you and y'all care about each other y'all holding each other accountable that can help anybody uh i feel like in their faith walk as long as you know you fight the good fight yeah and uh, you're willing and to you're willing to yeah. have that accountability right that's, that's the thing because mm -hmm. some people don't want it that's right. true too you know and they they and you some things you don't see until you confront them yeah then they can't stay around you when you really stay, you know, stay the course. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, <laughs> that's what you all have out there, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you all are, uh, and I've, I've had a lot of conversation with you concerning playing, uh, more so in the importance of having that personal relationship with the Lord, because that's, I don't know if you know to the degree that the anointing is needed for musicians. Now, black churches, and I have to say black churches because they're predominantly black, mm -hmm. it's all about the music, right. the talent, not the anointing. Mm -hmm. And if, some, if God just gave them the grace one day, yeah. they're happy with that. But the play and just, uh, I mean, because you got to know when you're just playing. Am I correct? Yes, sir. You know. You know. Okay. Your when did, how do you know you know? Your thoughts tell you. It's it, the, the times when I know that I'm playing in my flesh is by what I'm listening to in my head. It's, it's usually okay. I'm, I'm focused on oh, that, <clears throat> melody, that melody sounds good. Oh, this is where this is going. Uh oh, I could go here. I could go, and so I'm like a whole oh, conversation while you. Oh, believe me, I believe that. Yeah, it happens when I'm preaching. Same anyway. thing with but, same thing with me too. Like yeah, I'll be singing and I might be like, oh man, this 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 run will go good with that leak. Let me see if I can. Let me, you know, and, and you just having these conversations with yourself, like literally full on. But like, what, wouldn't it be also that the Holy Spirit can say, "Do this." Yeah. But that, so the difference. So can you discern the difference? Yes. yes. The difference is when I'm playing and I'm focusing on the Lord. There's no effort. It just it's like a. I agree. Whenever I'm praying I and agree. playing, as I'm playing, I'm just going to the next thing. I'm I'm like being led to the next thing. I'm not like pre planning. This could go. Like there. this could go here. That or, could go there. Yeah. It just and so that, yeah. it just it kind of flows. Flows. Like you don't need to write a book like that. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. because. I think musicians need to hear, just like there are tons of books out there for preachers, mm -hmm. but are there books like that for musicians? Ooh, there ain't too many saved ones to write them. Yeah! And I take that back. Ain't too, there ain't too many great musicians oh, that, that, that are saved to write And that's something you run into, too, because <laughs> let, let, me, let me speak on this. Typically, this is what we've seen. You have musicians and singers who have the skill yeah. But then the anointing needs to be fostered because right. they need to have a relationship with God. So it's yeah. down here. Exactly. So they rely on this. But then you have ones who have 
the anointing and it's fostered and everything like that. They had a relationship going, but the skill is not, is not like there. That. Would you ideally want it's is for both. both and it's the, rare. And that's rare. That's rare. that's rare. And why do you think? Because of the opportunities and they'll, they'll tell you over and over again, it's God. I've never heard more than I hear now about the grace of God being on me to be in the secular, in a secular arena. arena. I've never oh, heard that as oh, much. My. As much. Oh my God, I get to play with this artist who sings about sex and wow. drugs. Oh my God, what a blessing it is from the Lord. And it's whenever I whenever I see it, like before. I'm glad you're bringing that up. And, and when I used to see it from before, not knowing, I would be like, oh, so God can bless me to be in that arena. And you didn't and, know. The difference now, you know, that's just a setup yep. uh, by the enemy to give you what you may really want in your mind and even so in your heart. Mm -hmm. You want to be up there with them, mm -hmm. even though them can be going down there with him, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But you're not thinking of that. That's yes, not sir. the primary thing. Yes, sir. So I, it's 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 challenging. It is. So it is. you remember I said to you, would it be okay if God said, I remember that. "This is what you would do for the rest of your life, but you'll give me glory." I thought about that for two weeks after you said. Really? It. I thought about that for weeks. I remember after he told me. He yeah, because I told him right after that. I said, "Guess what, Bishop asked me." <laughs> Yep, he I told me right after, him right, after that. Ah. right after that. I said, guess what Bishop asked me? He was like, what? He asked me if it would be okay pretty much if my planned ambitions and dreams never came to pass. Yep. But that's a tough one. I did what the Lord wanted me to do. I was like, bro, I can't say the other one. I was like a devil. I literally can't be like. I was like, bro, I can't choose the other one. Yeah. Because then it'll be like, yeah. Uh, but you know what I think is good for, uh, I think it's good for people and musicians to see that, you know, the human side of it, like making a, a decision like that is tough. But you're giving up your will. That is. You better believe it. For his will. And you got to understand that the Bible says that he is a reward of those that diligently, diligently seek, seek him. him. So you, you're you trading in diligently seeking that other thing yeah. for coming over here yeah. and seeking God. Eddie James, we just saw this. And from him, it's valid. From him, it's valid. He yeah. said, it's a discussion that me and Jonathan have all the time. Like, I used to be like, man, like, I want to be... I have some great friends, some talented friends, like who are creative. They play for a lot of people and they can play. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, you know, to be around them and to, to glean off of their their creativity mm -hmm. and their and their uh, their knowledge of music is amazing. But you end up gleaning off of other things as well from their personal life and character. Yep. So you see the lack of character. How do you deal with that? Do you, have you been able in the past to balance and say, okay, this, it's almost like, do I choose to have a relationship knowing I'm going to get the bad with that good? Is that like that it's, in a sense? It is. So this is what uh, Eddie James said. He said, I've been around creative people. My friends are creative mm -hmm. and they've always been super creative and they can play. And he said, I would be around them and I would talk to them, but they were carnal. And I had to make a decision. He said, I had to choose whether I wanted to be creative or whether I wanted to be anointed. And so then he said, I had those people who could really play and everything that they did, it sounded really good. They got to play for a lot of people. And then he said, but I had a mentor who taught me how to pray and how to intercede. And so everything that I did had an edge on it because of the anointing yeah. over their creativity. And for that's something that we had always talked about. It's just like, yep. dang, well, do I have to sacrifice one for the other? Do I have to? I don't to? think it's, so. I, I just think it's the level of your commitment mm -hmm. to what you're called to do. Yes, sir. 
if uh, if you're called to fight, you ought to learn how to fight, yeah. and, and and then enjoy it in the process. Yes, yeah. sir. You know, but like playing or preaching or singing, you you sing a lot. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, and you, you, there's no way in the world to be. You have to compromise when it comes to the nature of creativity because that is God. Yeah. It's just when you create outside of God uh, mm, instead yeah. of creating with God. What do you mean by creating outside yeah. of God? Well, you're creating because God's given you the ability to create. Mm. The first thing, because he's a creator, you have that innate, intrinsic ability to create. You're mm. thinking of things, and God is just the overall sense of that creativity, but he's not the decision maker yeah. in terms of how you use it. Yeah. It's like he can give you a billion dollars, but he cannot make you methodically wealthy. Mm -hmm. He can make you rich instantly, mm -hmm. but he can't make you wealthy. He can't make you, give you character. Yeah to know mm. what to do with the money. Uh -huh. yeah. You gotta have that in your heart. So the same way, uh -huh. you have the creativity, you have the talent, mm -hmm. let's use it with talent. Mm -hmm. You have the talent, you have creativity, and you have the anointing. Mm -hmm. Why can't the anointing encircle both the creativity and the talent? You're right. What's wrong with that? Uh -huh. That's like me saying I'd rather have silver, Jesus, and silver and gold. <laughs> Why can't I have Jesus and yeah, silver and gold? Right. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Is that a yeah. sin all of a sudden that I have to choose? Uh -huh. right. So I, I used to ask people the question. Uh, I would say, and I'm going to ask you all, if you had a choice to use, to lose your right hand, your dominant hand, so if it's left or right, mm -hmm. your right or your left hand, or one eye, which one would you choose? Oh, answer. <laughs> Which one would you choose, having the power of choice? Oh, um, I would say I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say my eye. Okay, what would you choose? Neither, because I heard you say it before. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you said, you said, set me up, man. Yeah, the power of choice. Yeah. You have the power of choice. Right. Why Why would you have to lose an eye? And why you would have you a have choice. to lose? Yeah, yeah it's my choice. choice. Gotcha. I want to keep both of them. Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing. Why can't you have the anointing right. to embrace both? What All of this is what God gave you. Mm -hmm. You just got to allow the atmosphere of God to to literally just circumscribe that. And I think I could add, I, I guess, to that, I think for musicians, when it comes to that, what we look at, uh, when we get the opportunities and stuff like that, like it's, it's a, uh, I guess you could say a well-known fact in the uh, musician community, a lot of us think... Uh, Musicians, I myself included, I used to think that, hey, you know, if you go in the second year, <coughs> it pays this much. But when you're doing this for gospel or for the Lord, it doesn't seem like it pays much. So really all it is that uh, I feel like a lot of musicians are basing the opportunities that they choose on money oh, and yeah. status and what this can give you as opposed to. You this. did it, right? right. Oh, yeah. You yeah. did it, right? Well, wow. mm -hmm. So the reality is that if you did it in the past without having God as a primary, mm -hmm. you can only imagine what they're <laughs> wrestling with now. They probably call you all fools. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got yeah, to be that, an that, idiot. But yeah. let, me ask, let me say this, ask, uh, ask you all this question as well. Uh Knowing that, okay, if you are a musician, which you are, put yourself in the position of a pastor. Can you think subjectively so that way, objectively rather, so that way you can sort of be on the other end? Mm -hmm. How would you treat that musician if you were a pastor? Now? Yeah, oh, now. with everything that I've, I've experienced, it's completely different. First of all, you wouldn't touch an instrument at all. For, for a little bit until I know that first of all, you've accepted Jesus Christ, not the universe and not 
whatever else people be talking about, like energy and stuff, because I hear that a lot, like oh, yeah. with musicians. But it's like, if you, as long as you accepted Jesus Christ, cool, you've accepted Jesus Christ, how are you living? Now that you've come into this ministry, now mm -hmm. that you've come into this ministry, you know, we want to disciple you. Make sure that you're living the way you're supposed to be. Make sure there's nothing that you are ignorantly doing because you don't have the knowledge or, or somebody told you something else. Right. And right. the Bible doesn't say this. So mm -hmm. you would prefer to teach him at the, in the process. Yes. So he'll know why he's given that gift. Yes. That's what you're saying That's as exactly. a pastor. That's what I would do. Now. And what if he says, hey, but I got to make money mm -hmm. and, and I got to go out here and uh, so I can only play for you on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. What would you say? He can go and play. And then <laughs> he doesn't have to come back because it's, That's it. I did that. And so I, 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 could tell, I could tell him what I know. If you do that, guess what? You're not growing spiritually. The, the conclusion that I came to was this. Anything that I'm doing that's not helping my relationship with Christ mm -hmm. is pulling me further. Oh, you better believe and it. And so yeah. no justification in between, not, well, this is okay, that's okay, because I've seen it. I can say, oh, well, you know, God's given me the grace to do this. Well, God's given me the grace to do this. I don't know what God is talking about, because right. <laughs> whenever you go to a club and yeah, that's drink no and go, we, yeah. we like to say it like this, as if Oh, God has given me the grace, the grace to go to here. be in these environments right, right, as right. if we're going out to clubs, bars, to the and concerts people. saying, do you know your Lord and Savior, right. Jesus Christ? And we're not going there. Yeah, we, yeah, we ain't going there for that. You don't do that. So why, why, would, why, why would we say the Lord has given me this grace to be in this atmosphere and every prophet, every disciple and every apostle who went to a place, they were preaching Jesus Christ. I, I couldn't say that. Was, yeah, it's a, it's, it, that's just a that. cop out. I was drinking right. Jack. I was wow. like, just, yeah, I was wow. drinking. I was drinking and I was talking, but I wasn't. I, the most I probably did before and, was it. And raised in the church. Raised knowing in the church. holiness. Your, your parents did not drink. Didn't play about nope. it. Period. Yes. Your parents didn't drink. No, didn't sir. cuss. Nope. No, never heard sir. them cuss. Yeah, never heard them. Never life. heard them. Nope. But you go out and do just the opposite. Yep. Yep. Yes, but sir. the seed was in you. Yes, it was. So you as a pastor, you would tell them, go ahead. Would you tell them, but, uh, but come back and play on Sunday? I couldn't do that, no. I would be Why? completely convicted. Because it's, if, if I do that, then first of all, that lets the congregation know, hey, you can be double-minded and you can be a leader. And that's confusing. That's confusing, and that's yes, it. sir. And then it lets people know also, oh, even if I'm holding everybody else to the godly standard yeah. that we're supposed to be, but I let this one do what he wants because he has a talent. That also shows that I'm weak because Absolutely. I feel like, yes, well, I, I gotta have this, so I'll, I'll give him a little bit of grace. Right. Little, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, you're validating yeah. how he feels when you do that. Mm -hmm. Yep, That's what you're doing. If you're a pastor mm -hmm. and you're acting like you care, but you really don't care. You know. Nope. You're validating and saying, okay, as long as you come back and play here, that you're validating. Mm -hmm. You're justifying his act. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll say, he don't care either. Yeah. Because he wouldn't let me do that. That's how I felt. Because I never had, I'm not going to lie, I didn't have any loyalty to any pastor. <laughs> and I didn't. We did, though. I didn't. You either. No. Cause he no. played, he played. He was see that's the thing. I, he see, also played. He didn't just sing. Uh, you know, <laughs> they use you more for your playing than your singing. This is they use me for everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get the uh, get me some tea. Get me no <laughs> no no. Go like ahead. Everything you made you a part of the Motisa yeah, tribe. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it, I mean, it was it was yeah. They use it for everything to to really be. Yeah, the same thing. I mean, what you what you're doing now? Yep. I have been doing that, you know, for years. Yep. Teaching the parts, playing the music, leading the songs, yep. all from the keyboard. All so I mean, yeah, it's, it was it was a lot. And before he got there, I was doing it. Yep. And leading wow. praise and worship. He was leading praise and worship and playing the keyboard. Singing. And then and so when he came, I think I only did. And like, not saved. No. No, for real, no. no. Oh, my 
gosh. No. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep talking. But, yeah, <laughs> not say. But uh um, wow, man. And in these instances, like I think one of the <laughs> man. one of the most uh regretful times I know that I had, thinking back on it, like the most ashamed I've ever been. I never forget going to church one Sunday and playing it a church with like the homies. I was just over there sitting in and then uh after church I didn't I didn't smoke like that. I didn't like to smoke, but everybody was smoking, drinking and with women. This is like immediately after church. So church not ends. even Whoa. This is like like hey, who This makes me want to cry. And it's it's bad because you the, you can there was a <coughs> pastor I never forget. It was a pastor who asked me. He said Hey, I like the way you flow with me. He said, yeah. "Hey, I'm trying to get you. I, I gotta go play down here. I'm trying. I'm trying to get you to come with me." He said, "I can make. I can make the money look right for you. Man. I just need you to come down. You can do these two services. I'll pay. So you can make good money. You can. He's. I'm talking about easy. If you can play, you can easily make a thousand dollars a week. Easy. And so, you know, it was like." Uh, as a young person, you 22, 23, 24, 25 years old, you see it as, oh man, it's a blessing. That's how you're not mature man, enough to know. Yeah. Right. So you you see it as And uh, your life is in jeopardy. Your life you is can die. In your sin. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Do y'all know musicians that died early? Yep. Wow. 26, 27. Wow. Yep. 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And, and you know these pastors didn't really care no. about, and I mean honestly, you knew mm -hmm. personally. Yeah, <clears throat> they heard about them dying, and you not. know who I'm thinking about. Yep, I know exactly. <laughs> he who knows about. He didn't. He didn't have no. Yeah, he didn't have no guidance for his his his, his, his life. Went bad. Yep. That's the sad part. And he was as talented as can be, and you could tell he was he like it was a cry for help, but they just. They, what they do, they use and abuse you, and then. What was that? You know. Did you feel used? Oh yeah, Bishop. I, I mean, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, I just felt like I would be sitting like like say for instance, I, I never forget this one uh one Sunday uh at this particular church <coughs> um they were doing like uh. What they you know pray for the people bringing in the new year and all this stuff like that. Uh, this was a, a few years back, and you know I, I I was sitting over there and I said to myself, I said I wonder if they're even gonna mention mm. the musicians, if they even gonna mention me and the drum. I wonder if they're gonna come over here and lay hands. Never happened. They don't care. Mm. That's when I knew. It's like oh well, we just I feel like hey I'm expendable. They just want me just for this. That's all they care about, mm. and even to the point where. Uh, he's dealt with this, you know, when it's time to just say go home for a holiday or something. They're like, okay, you can go. As long as you back on, it, even uh, I had a, a, a church one time that was like, you got to be back for uh, cr on Christmas, Christmas Day because yeah. they had a Christmas service. That's right. Like, you got to be back. And so you would see New Year's, Christmas, it's like you already away from home. Don't see they know fans. you. They know you far away from home. And then you tell and them you're not a member of that church. No, but they nope. pay you, so they hold your check over your head. Well, if you're not here, you're not getting paid. We get somebody else. Wow. And then, wow. so you know, it was times I never forget where, like times on New Year's or times on, and and it was my fault though. It was my fault yep. for for allowing. It was my income at the time, but for even choosing. Okay, instead of just going. And choosing to, first of all, not even be a part of that, but at that time, to say, well, I just won't take that income. I'll go and I'll just spend time with my family. But, you know, to, to take things out of necessity. And they know, they give you enough to uh, to keep you coming back. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's like, oh, no, nah, everybody's not getting it. So they give you enough to know, like, okay, this is, you know, he'll appreciate this. Does that bother you all at all? Yes. Honestly, I'm for saying sure. it. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm no, it. for sure. Because it's, it's tons of them out there, man. Yeah, man. And I mean that. Uh, tons of them. And really, in all honesty, 
I think just as much as the pastor and the musician are, are narcissistic in their nature, mm -hmm. uh, and none of them care. I've, I've, you, I've said this, I'm sure you heard me say, mm -hmm. pastors can be users. You said that. Oh, yeah. You know, and musicians don't mind being used, but I think that, uh, you know, if you, man, God, man, somebody's going to answer for that. Because mm -hmm. it's like what the Bible says in Ezekiel. If you don't tell them, the blood is required upon your hands. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like if you've ever seen someone, and I remember God dealing with my heart, when you see someone you don't know and you're moved to compassion because of their situation, God is touching you for a reason so that you don't become like that or the people that may have abused them. I don't know if you've ever seen women abused by guys you knew and you just, you, personally, you, you don't take, I can't, I couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. Even though in some occasions I wasn't even born again. I just, I personally, I've seen some abuse out there that that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. But uh, the abuse in the church to me is no better. Mm -hmm. It it just isn't any better, man. And uh, I think it hurts more because of what you expect. Yes, right. That's exactly right. You know, uh, I'm sad by you all saying what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm sad by it. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Yeah. It. it uh, I got PTSD on this one. <laughs> I've never been that kind of person. Even when my church was just, I just was never that kind. I'm not going to use you. Uh, I'd rather be the one jacked up, but I'm not going to use you. Even if you're jacked up, I can't use you like that because I, God holds me accountable. You know, uh, does that matter to me? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Would I rather clap my hands and stomp my feet? Brother, if I got to do that, we'll do that. Yeah. But you see the same thing among preachers. They can be great orators. They speak so well, just no anointing. My thing is people can't detect the difference because they enjoy the entertainment aspect the, of the it. The theatrics. And don't know that that's what they're getting. And the same way with musicians, mm -hmm. the same way with singers, and everybody's performing. And uh, I was talking with a guy recently uh, that just came to the church. Man, and uh, you know, he had been to so many wars, and I said, brother, you're broken. I know what it is to be like that, and I know what it is when nobody seemed to care. When I went through my divorce, <clears throat> and no one, man, if it's a time you need mercy, I'm telling you, that's, those are times you need mercy. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> you recognize your own failures, your own stupidity. And there was just one man, one man that, uh, of course, he's passed. And he came and said, get up and stop giving those people something to talk about. That... I will never ever forget it. Mm -hmm. And he just sat beside me on the couch. I only had one couch left in that entire house. Yes, wow. And, uh, you know, ridiculed. So when people come back, if you're honestly, hey, we'll accept you. Uh, look, I'm that person. So why would mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to do, because Jesus gave an example of someone that was forgiven went right back out and didn't forgive the other didn't guy. Didn't forgive the other, and then, yep. Yeah, so <laughs> it would be, man, it would be, so you all have a responsibility because yes, if you give in the slightest bit, your fall will be greater mm -hmm. than it's ever been. I can guarantee you that because you don't get up here and know. The reason why Satan, there's no repentance for him because He's never had to deal with temptation. He is the temptation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, <clears throat> he's in heaven with God. <clears throat> he's leading the worship. He's this incredible creature with 
the the music is in him, yeah. you know, yeah. and you become lifted up when nobody's there to lift you up. <laughs> So yeah. you become the originator of it, right. and that's why pride under any circumstances is wrong. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Yes, sir. Because who gave you your voice? Who gave you the ability to play? Who God. gave you your looks? Who gave you this? Who? God gave us everything. everything. There's nothing we have that we can say, I got this on my own. That's right. Brother, your feet, your toes, your spirit, everything came from God. Mm -hmm. So to be to get become knowledgeable of where you are, it's like I know, brother, I screw up, I don't think it's any redemption for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh it's like in the scriptures in the book of Hebrews. You ever read that? Yes, sir. Yeah. With those who fall away who've experienced the uh the goodness of God, the grace of God, yeah. the salvation of the Lord and turn away. There remain yeah. no Ooh. more sacrifice. You yeah. know already. It's not like nobody's encouraging you to sin. You just went back out there. Mm -hmm. You just walked away. Wow. So it's like to one much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. You just landed in the wrong place if you thought you could just get yeah. out there. <laughs> <laughs> like you... You got trapped like I did. Yeah. And there's no way out. <laughs> and that's when out. Dr. Nelson I'm telling you, he said, you cheat on your wife, I got to kill you. Mm -hmm. I knew that was it. <laughs> My up. goodness. Can you deal with that? <laughs> you got no choice. Got no choice. Yeah. I would think yeah. you don't have any choice, but yeah. some people think they, they do have a choice to, to obey or mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. you know, just like you and I. But uh, I'm saddened by that. You know, I mean, the world is already just crumbling, man. Our own nation is crumbling right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm wondering how many people see what is happening with our government, with uh, illegal immigration. We have a law. Just go by the the law. And but no, you got crooked politicians yep. that are methodical and they are, they are patient in how they are causing this process to happen because mm -hmm. needless to say they have for years thought okay we got to get blacks from to be back in in the underclass yeah it's 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 working like that because just to think if we're giving all this money away to illegal immigration we could have done that for all of our vets that are That's on right. the streets, That's our right. homeless. We could have done that years ago. Years ago. Mm -hmm. So we only do for people when we have a plan that will exclude a certain people. Mm -hmm. And brother, I think it's go backfire. Yeah, I believe so too. I think it's go backfire. Yeah. I think God is like, okay, I'll let them do it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And these people are going to come over here and get saved, yep. for real, yep. yeah. get their lives together, because most of them are Catholics anyway. Yeah. You know, and they're going to come to know Jesus, yep. and they're not going to vote Democrat. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and I'm neither Democrat nor, mm -hmm. but it's just not that. It's, I'm talking with one of our pastors in uh, Phoenix, mm -hmm. and what's huge there is traffic. Human trafficking. Really? Wow. They just caught some more uh, uh, trafficking so many girls and boys. I That's mean, crazy, it's, man. it's horrendous. So, our world has experienced stuff we haven't seen. And if you're not aware of some of the certain things that are going on, you know, the world view of the news is just the world view of what's going on in the world. It's just unfortunate. Nobody wants to hear Jesus, Jesus' view of what's going on in the world and how we should have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So this is a part of it. Mm -hmm. Because those people, uh, young men, young women, man, they gotta they gotta they gotta find God yeah. before they go to hell. Cause yeah. People are dying at a younger age by killing, murders, you yeah. know, even if you're you, you, there's no health issues, man. People are killing one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, my I, my nephew just uh, or one of my uh, my 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 son's uh, my daughter ex-husband mm -hmm. 
you know, he just killed his uh, girlfriend and then shot himself. Whoa. You know, it's all in the news, you know. So it's it's all kinds of stuff, man. Like yeah. My little niece or nephew, no more than just a year and a half, not even two, killed in the house television, fell on him. We, we, and I told y'all about the television that fell on my head. I you know, said that. Told y'all where I came from. <laughs> I remember you said that. <laughs> so it's a lot. You just, I remember my wife was just saying, she said, I just feel like I want to cry. What do we do? How do we, how do we deal with this knowing that our children, you got a little baby coming. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't fault parents for homeschooling, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my grandchild, child, I'm, I'm like, we'll pay for him to go to private school, yeah. as long as he don't get in that system. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's already going to pollute you that being in the world, but yes, at least you got a better chance at it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> even if you're homeschooled. So we had our school for years, 20 years, man, and. Some of those kids grew up to be very, very good children mm -hmm. and, and or adults rather. And so <clears throat> you all you're young and you're strong and God has called you to be difference makers. Mm -hmm. That that's a heavy responsibility. Yeah. You know, I didn't get that call and even though I was called to ministry, I didn't get the urgency of that call till I was like after my divorce. Uh, you know, I, I was 32, 30, 31 years old. Mm -hmm. I got divorced when I was 30. Mm -hmm. You know, I was married for 10 years. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a long time. Yeah. You know, I got married when I was 20. Mm -hmm. So uh, those years, you know, you, I should have been better, but you know what? I, I had such a bad example. Mm -hmm. Pastors grew around. Yeah. Even though I didn't do it, you know what, what happened? It got into me. Yeah. Wow. It didn't happen immediately, but the seed mm -hmm. got in me. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would always say that. Sometimes you don't know what you're getting from a preacher mm -hmm. or a pastor, especially when you embrace that person, because you're going to get the good as well as the bad, just like how you all came here. Mm -hmm. You got the the DNA of your parents. You got whatever was in them jacked up. Yep. Uh, and there, there are other parts yes, of it, man. you know, physical mm -hmm. as well as, uh, you know, the spiritual aspect. So we got to pass on by changing the narrative concerning our past. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, so that when your, your child grows up to be a musician, because you're going to hate if they come to you and say, uh, I'm going over here, because you're going to know that pastor's going to use them. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do when they want to if they're grown. Mm -hmm. That's how it happened with you all. Yeah. Unless your parents may not have known it to that degree, because mm -hmm. I know it. I you know, I came into real Christianity. I mean, I got saved when I was 14, Pentecostal, backslid at seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seven days later, rather. <laughs> seven days later, backslid. Uh, but came back at 18, never walked away. Yeah. yeah. I did a lot of junk, believe me, all my life. Mm. Uh, but I, it was real until I, I just, I thought everybody in the church was real. Yeah. So when you come from the world, it's a, I, have a, I had a different perspective than you all. You came from in the church. Mm -hmm. I came from outside yeah. the church. Yeah. So I thought people were real. Were different, yeah, than what you experienced oh, in the yeah, world. Oh, yeah, man. I'll, I'll never forget the first time I saw a preacher uh, preach on, I mean, he was preaching about love, and he was love, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they were right outside a group of preachers. The drinks, they were smoking cigars and drinking. They had, and I couldn't believe it. Wow. Because I was Pentecostal and we didn't do that. But when I saw it, I said, that's not right. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but it was like taboo. You don't talk about yes, that. Yeah. You know, you know <laughs> yeah. I'm a young minister. Uh -huh. So, and then you get involved and then you see your pastor involved. But, you know, you don't know. You try to stay as far away wow. as possible, but still is there. You I, know I it's just, there. Oh, man. That's a, and that's every, a every yeah. responsibility to be playing with like that, man. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Like, oh. That's crazy. Buddy. I think about like... Uh, I don't know. I've, I feel I've experienced so much, and it was only a few people over the course of my life who I can say uh, who helped me learn lessons. And they were so small, they just stuck with me. It was this guy when I was 19 years old. His name is David Dormius, mm. and uh, he played piano for Donnie McClurkin. Oh. I met him at this. He joined the army. And I, I was walk. I'm 19, mm -hmm. 19, and I was walking by one of the practice rooms. I was in the Marine Corps then, and he was in the Army. We were at the School of Music, and literally, I was walking by the practice room. He was just playing hymns. I was like, you don't hear people play like that. Like, who is that, <laughs> who is that playing? Like, that's uh -huh, good. So uh -huh. I opened the door. I'm like, 19, who are you? <laughs> You sound good. I'm just like, you know, I'm just right, like right, who are right. you? Teach me that. Like that's just uh -huh. how I was. Teach me how to do that. And so me and him became great friends. And he and the cool thing about him, he was one of the first people that I met in my life who was very skilled. He was humble and he loved the Lord. Wow, and I remember good. he was he was at that time I was 19, he was 28. He was 28 years old, so we would always be together playing. He would show me stuff. And it was the first time that ever happened. Most people, even when we were younger. They don't they, show you their secrets. They can't because they felt like, oh, if I show him, then he'll get better. That <clears> man, <throat> in the matter, we was at the school for like three months. He In three months, he showed me everything that he knew. Wow. And then, uh, and then I think after a month of me knowing him, he told me I used to play for Donnie McClurkin. He never told me until yeah. like a month went by. Wow. And then so I remember. He never used that. To say, listen to me. His plan did enough. Yeah. His plan did enough. <laughs> and so then, whenever, whenever we went to a church one day, and the pastor had asked, could anybody play? And so he went and he played, and then he caught, because I played drums, mm -hmm. and so I played the drums. At the end of the service, uh, the pastor called us in the office. He said, listen, you guys are such a great help. He said, this is not, I think, I think it was like $40 or something uh -huh. like that a piece. And he was like, we're gonna give you this and we just want you to know that we appreciate you. And that's and that's all, this is what we can do, we'll give you this. And Dormy has said, no, we're not gonna take it. I'm like, we're not gonna, you're not gonna take it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> and, so, and so then, the guy gives him the envelope, he gives it back, and then the guy goes to give me the envelope, and Dormius takes the envelope and gives it back. Uh huh. And he's and then when we get in the van to go back to base, he says, "Hey, we don't do that for that." He said, first wow. of all, you see, you see that it's a smaller church." And he said, first of all, you you got a great job. You had a great position anyway." Right. He right. said, "You do this as a service." And he told me, "I'm 19." Wow. He was one of the first people to tell me that. And then. I think one of the next wow. people who I ran into uh, at at a certain point was uh, as as far as musicians go was a guy named Ishmael Cotton, and he 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 just taught me so much when I lived down in just a genuine good friend, wow. and he taught me so much. He was like uh, he was like he would let me come to his house. He, he was married. And we would come over. He was he. I sounded just like him on the keyboard. He taught me everything that he for years. He would just let me come over. It would be like two o'clock in the morning, and then he would be like, "Hey, you know the code to the house. Make sure you lock if you leave. If not, well, that's, you go a, to sleep. That's, a that's a good friend. Yeah, good brother. He's yeah. great. Great he, guy. Great guy. He would just show me whatever he knew. He didn't withhold anything. And then and and, and he was the same he way. He didn't see you as a threat either. He did not. You know. He and did you not. Weren't. And he came, yeah. I will never forget this. He showed me something. He was one of the first people to, to do like this. He was like, uh, he showed me something. 
And after he showed me, I remember I came back like the next week and I was like, man, how are you doing that? How are you doing that? He, he stopped playing and looked at me and said, did you, did you practice what I told you to practice last week? I was like, no. He was like, if you did, you would know how to do this. And then he just turned around and started back playing. And so I didn't come around for two weeks. And I went home and practiced what he told me. And when I came back, he said, what have you been doing? I said, I practiced the stuff you told me. <laughs> he said, you're the first one to do it. And then he said, now I got to go wow. practice because now I got to go back and catch up. <laughs> so, but, but learning those uh, lessons also let me know, hey, it's people out here who care. And then when it came to the pastors, what I now realize is this. I couldn't be, I can't be a victim and, and be an, Absolutely. an overcomer at the same time. Right. Wow. So now exactly. I know, because if I, if I would have known that back then, it would have never been, these pastors are taking advantage of me. These pastors, it wouldn't have never been that. It would have been, well, this is what the, this is what the Bible says. Yeah. This is what I should do. Nobody, yes. nobody can take advantage of me. Yes, absolutely. And I have a choice to make. Absolutely. So, yeah. I need one more time, because I know we're about to close. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you all this question, real important. How pervasive is homosexuality among musicians in the church, churches? Not the church that Jesus built, but just the organization of churches. And give a very brief answer. How pervasive? And we talking about this in the church. I mean, Bishop is running rampant. Really? Homosexuality. Yes. So even some of your, and I, I won't even name no names, but just look at some of your, the people who church musicians or uh, singers put on a pedestal. Look at some of your artists that are national recording artists, international gospel recording artists, are homosexual. Now, so when they see that. Working was up front about oh yeah but being it's delivered. yeah we we know about about you know done it but he was up front about being delivered but there are others wow. who haven't been delivered who you can just see <laughs> wow and those are the people that younger musicians younger it's not just a black church right it's whites hispanics oh man and look. you've seen it in all oh, yeah. all circles oh yeah yeah yes sir and you have to be so aware because without knowing it, next thing you know, you're caught up in something that you don't want to be in. It's like some, some of the uh, guys who used to tell me, like, uh, they would go play for this person. And mm -hmm. then, you know, like, they're playing on tour, and this person has other guys coming to meet him in other places. Like to, wow. So you see, you, you see these things and hear these things. You're like, oh, no, nah, that's, not, that's not true. And I, you don't want to believe it. These guys right. ain't saved. They don't care. Like, they're not lying. They telling you what just happened. Right. They, they have no skin in the game or nothing to lose. They just, I, I didn't know that. Like, this guy. Were is you like, all ever approached or? I, to be yeah. honest, it happened, but you got to cut it off. Quick. Yeah, you got yeah. Like, you got to cut it off. You, gotta, I, you either going to fight I'm, or you go. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, not, in, not like in the that. church, but outside the church. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Because, it, you know, I know you asked the specific question about in the church, but see, the industry that I you know, doing opera music stuff. Music period. It's music period. Oh, it's everywhere. Wow. And so you gonna, I never forget I did a, a production of uh, Porgy and Bess. Oh, my movie, man, but go ahead. <laughs> and I was <laughs> out of the, the, the cast, you know, probably I'll say, we had a, a, a pretty big, uh, a pretty big cast uh, during that time. I was probably maybe one of two straight men wow wow out of give me like 15 men oh no probably easily like 30 35 wow something like that <laughs> wow <laughs> that's ridiculous it is. wow it is yeah so music is definitely controlled by the enemy yeah that's what but you can tell and church. And you can tell that's what he he uses what would make this church so different for you all? You all have now been here. You've been here going on three, three years, years, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't even seem that. It doesn't. Time seem flies. like if it's anything, you're going on two years. Maybe. But three years. <laughs> That's right. 
How different, because I know you're just coming. Yes, sir. How different is this ministry? Do you believe that we're working to do stay with the word as much as we know? What what made you feel like this is different? Even though you came and you were skeptical at first a little bit, mm -hmm. what made you and how is it different for you now? Well, it's, it's like... A when I first came, I still dealt with the challenge of being taken advantage of. That's what I dealt with from 18 all the and way. Knowing to, I'm not that kind of person. You're not. You're not. You didn't. It, you it, didn't know. Yeah, I was just. I didn't have trust. I didn't want to have trust. I, I. I'd rather have, for for lack of a better term. Well, it seems ironic. I would rather have peace of mind to know that I'm in control, but mm. there's still no peace in, in yeah. being a skeptic. But I felt like, well, as long as I keep these thoughts, it'll protect me. As long as I make sure that nobody can enter this space and that nobody can take advantage of me because I won't let them cross this line, right. I'm in control. And that, and that was a lot. So when I got here, it was being challenged by all of those things. You, I couldn't stay because you're hearing the word of God. You're hearing what the Bible says. Now you have a choice. And, and for some people, like they'll be like, man, like your life really changed and all of this happened. And the secret that I keep telling people, I was just like, what, what did I do? Like when I think back now, Pastor B would challenge me and correct me. You would challenge me and correct me. And it was like uh, Elder Sparkman, Deacon Harris. And, <laughs> and so, Men. yeah, they, they would like check me. <laughs> and so when, whenever all of these people were saying things, I had a choice. Yeah, you're right. And I saw the growth happen and how quickly I would make a choice and and that's that's what I've seen so when I come and I hear you preach on a Sunday is it gonna take me a year to implement this is it gonna take me six months to implement this can I implement it today you give me something else Wednesday and I implement that Good and then it, look at that and bit. so and then I started seeing it that way one of the biggest challenges for me was giving and that, especially to a pastor so you didn't know about it but no. one of the things that uh, I never forget when Millennium Offering was coming around, I was like, man, now, here we go. They're trying to take my money. <laughs> I was like, hey, this timing. It's it. I, yeah. like, I said, this timing is too perfect. Uh, <laughs> right around the tax season. I said, I said, this timing is too perfect. And so, and so then, uh, this is really what happened. I was like, this is no lie. <laughs> This is when the Lord dealt with me. So and That's still, a funny one. Still, we need to come back for that one, though. Go still, ahead. Ta still talking about, like, what changed here. That These are the things that changed. So listening quickly when it came to giving. my Like I said, when I first came here, my challenge was being taken advantage of. How did most people take advantage of me? Because you didn't give in the church much. No. Playing as a musician. Did y'all give offerings? No, Not sir. No. <laughs> Nothing. Everything you know was The only thing that I would do... I would, I would, I did this much because of how I was raised. I would, I had a separate account for my tithe, and I would always send that back home to my granddad's okay. church. And that was it, though. That's it. That was it. I because I was like, no money to that uh, church. Because I, I didn't do nothing. Listen, from growing up, I was like, all I heard them about, they do nothing. Curse with a curse. <laughs> Because you didn't pay your tithes. Like, well, I don't want to be cursed, so let me just let me pay this tithes. But it, that's all I knew that day. <laughs> right, So right. then after after getting here, i never forget, Millennium Offering came around. After Millennium Offering came around, I was like, well, you know, they're trying to get me. I said all of that. And then the Lord came. I was praying and reading my Bible one day, and it was talking about uh, it's more of a blessing to give than receive. And then the Lord convicted me, literally. It was like, hey, as long as you believe that these people whoever these people are mm -hmm. can take advantage of you i'm not god because if you're saying if you do this then they can take advantage of you then i can't do anything for you but if you believe what the word says one it's more of a blessing to give than receive when you do give it's not under pressure it's out of your heart but then if i withhold and i don't give anything at all i won't reap anything right. so the only option is to give the question is how much and so then as the Lord was dealing with me on that, it was like, well, you got to give. And I was I was paying stuff off. I had just got down here and it, I was like, oh, my goodness. But 
Yeah. I gave a thousand dollars, and then I look now. That was when I first got here, and I look wow. now, and I see, like, hey, it is more of a blessing to give than to receive. Hey, nobody can take advantage of me, and I'm under a good man of God. Nobody's yes, trying right. to take advantage yeah, of me. Yeah, ain't nobody trying and to so, take it. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, believe me, your money is your money. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. And so the thing, the thing that I've got, like, if I could tell anybody anything, young people especially, is hey, you you have to remove skepticism and you have to act. It it doesn't mean yeah. When whenever I did give a thousand dollars, I'm not telling you that my mind was at ease. Not at all. Right, right. right it was right. a fight. It was like, hey, I'm giving this. I don't want to because at the time I was afraid. After I gave it, the fear goes away. Now what happens? The worst that can happen is I get taken advantage of. But and the Lord has just said, hey, you're that's not going exactly to get taken right. advantage of. That's what you said. So it's like at that point, well, the Lord said I'm not going to get taken advantage of. Let me give it. Let me see. Real fast, brother. What, did you, what do you feel like this ministry is providing for you that God is doing for you here? Uh, I'm going to do first uh, freedom. This is probably the first, not probably, this is the first place <laughs> that I felt free to just worship for real. And also, this is the first place in a long time that I have given. When I say I didn't used to give nothing. <laughs> Everything was coming to me. I that boy was a miser, huh? Listen, I wasn't giving a dollar, a cent, not even a penny. This nigga say, I'll starve your old dog, bro. <laughs> I, I wasn't yeah, giving nothing, real. but it, it's, it's, uh, you know, I've gotten just, just, uh, uh, to be concise and clear, um, being fed too. I think that's, and when I say fed, we ain't talking about bread and, you know, so we talking about the word from a man of God that I know is following the yeah. voice of God. Yeah. That's evident. I never you're respected. you trying to lift yeah. up No, no, no. That, yeah. Like I had, you know, because <laughs> it, it, uh, he can attest to this, like Devon and I have always been the ones, I think in our it's like immediate family, like cousins and stuff who we were always away from home. You know, yeah, and, he was telling me yeah and so we've always been off afar, you know, experiencing different things and stuff like that. So this really is the first church that I've been a part of since I left home yeah. that I know this is where God called me to be. Praise God. Man makes all the difference in the world. In us in prayer, brother, real fast. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this conversation, God. Lord, we thank you for allowing us. Lord, to be here, Lord, to be under a pastor, Lord, who cares, Lord, to be under leadership who leads us and guides us closer to you, Father, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, a special blessing, Lord, over Bishop God, Lord, so he can continue to lead us, Father, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we pray for everybody who is watching, Father, Lord, if there's yes, anybody Father. who has experienced any hurt, Lord. Lord, I pray that you touch oh, them and yes. let them know, yes. Father, Lord, that their yes. heart doesn't have to remain broken. Father, that they can be healed, hold and restored. Father, let them know that they're not a victim, that they're conquerors, Father, Lord, and that you have a plan for their lives. And Lord, I just pray that every musician, every singer, Father, yes. Lord, has a hunger and a thirst for your anointing, Father. I pray that you send your spirit, Lord, yes, to Lord. each and every one of us and remind all of us, musicians, singers, pastors, Father, Lord, that the purpose of our gift is to serve you. Yes, the purpose Holy of this Spirit. gift, Thank God, you, Lord, Father. is to edify the church yes, and edify Lord. the body. And so, Lord, I pray these things in your holy name, God, Lord, Lord, that you just continue to give us the understanding of your will yes. so that we can walk pleasing in your eyes, Father, Lord, all of the days of our lives. Yes, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I will say I have some good, strong men and women in this church. And, uh, because it would be hard for them to follow me yeah. if they weren't. I can assure you of yeah. that. Papa don't take no mess. He don't. <laughs> yes, sir. He don't. 